For the next project that I'm going to work on as part of a video, I think I'm going to work on one of these little hammers. And the ones I have actually about finished from previous hammer making episodes are cross peen hammers. And when I say episodes, I mean episodes in the shop, not video episodes. I haven't actually filmed making a little hammer like this. So I'm going to start this, and this one will actually be a ball peen hammer, but it'll have kind of octagonal faces and some start off octagonal as it goes to the round ball peen side. And I'm going to start with a piece of one inch square by three inch long, 4140, so it'll be a nice tough steel, it'll harden nicely and put up with the little bit of abuse that a hammer this small actually is subjected to. So the first thing we need to do is go punch a hole in this. I've already placed a single center punch mark both sides of this right in the center of the three inch bar. And I'm just going to center punch that a little bit deeper so it's easier to find when I'm punching the hole. Now that center punch mark is actually large enough because I drove it so deep that I can index a round punch in there. I'm going to turn this around every few blows just in case my approach is a little off and that way I can offset any variation. I'm also going to cool my punch from time to time. This punch has been overheated enough it's not very hard anymore but it still does the job. I have to straighten this punch out before I'm done because it's sort of bend just a little bit. I say it's been uh, overheated many times in its life. But I've also been using it for about 20 years, so it doesn't owe me anything. No idea what the steel is. hole all the way through now. Now somebody out there right now is saying, but you don't want a round hole for a hammerhead. And that is very true. See, now that punch is glowing a little bit. It's exactly why this punch gets overheated. But it's done a whole lot of these little hammers. So we're going to take this hole and we're going to make it bigger and then we're going to make it oval. We've looked at turning a round hole into an oval before. And what we're going to do is we're just going to keep stretching this hole. We're going to work from one side then turn it over and go to the other side until it's uh, considerably larger, until I get this punch to the point it's almost ready to stick in my Pritchell hole. You want to work this fairly hot. The 4140 is tough stuff to forge when it gets cold. As you can see that hole's already getting bigger. We're about, about a fourth of the way where we want to be so far. By working both sides we keep that bulge even instead of having a taper. We will eventually get there. By working the side of the eye a little bit it helps stretch it around the punch and the punch comes off easier. We're getting much closer to what I want though. 
couple more heats, we ought to be there. So what do we have? We have a nice round eye. And if you want a round eye, you're pretty well done. But this eye also bulges. And I don't want either a round eye or a bulging eye. So what happens if we take the bulge out? Well, we end up with an eye that isn't bulged and isn't round and it's starting to go oval on us, which is exactly what we want. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and drift it with a hammer eye drift. Now I can't drive this into my Pritchell hole, so I will have to work over the hardy hole. And as I do that, I'm going to move it corner to corner to support the hammer head. Bring it up here and make sure I keep it flat. I'll probably drift this again when I'm all done. Now this particular drift is a cast ductile iron drift that is available on the internet. There's a few places that sell them and I think eBay is one of those places you can find them. They're probably all coming from the same manufacturer. So you'll just have to look around and I'm sure somebody is already typing the web address down in the comments section. So look down there if you're looking for a, a cast hammer eye drift. This is the HD1. I think there's an HD2. So that's all I'm going to do to that eye right now. And that is a functional little hammer. But that's not the hammer I want, so we're going to have to do more to it. I'm going to use a guillotine tool here and step in. I'm going to leave about a quarter inch untouched on the front of the eye. And eventually I'm going to want to go octagon with this. I'm going to be real careful to get everything lined up. Otherwise, you just leave chop marks you're going to have to file out later. You also want to make sure you don't go too deep or you'll create a weak spot. I'm just creating a place for a shoulder and to start establishing the shape of the, the head and the peen end. And I'll do the same on both ends. I'm going to take that just a little deeper on this side. every side because the the initial effect from the top is different than the bottom so you want to make sure you keep it even now this is going to need to be forged down because it doesn't go all the way out to the edge someday I might make another set of guillotine dies that lead the exact perfect angle for these hammers but I haven't gotten around to that exact same procedure on the the other end and try to make it balanced so leave the same amount of material.
I'm going to leave the face of this kind of octagonal, but the ball peen side I want to round up. So I'm going to take this butchering to a round shape. Again, I want to make sure I don't go too deep. I just want to get a good idea what what it's going to look like. Now I'm going to try and finish this up by hand. Hopefully I won't hit this part with the hammer and just work on this part. I just want to blend where I've butchered as neatly as possible. This is what will become the ball peen. This is a fairly big ball peen for the size of the face. This is not like a regular ball peen hammer you buy at the hardware store. Start rounding that up. A lot of this will be done at the grinder. There again, if I were doing a whole lot of the same hammer, I'd probably make a spring swedge and do this under the power hammer. Of course, since the power hammer is still down for repairs, that wouldn't do me any good right now. So that just rounds that up some. It will need considerable bench work or, like I say, grinding work. Then I'm going to clean up the, the face end. All I really need to do here is just blend this bevel. And try real hard not to mess up the section with the eye. And that will all get finished by grinding. Give it one last drifting just to clean that up. This isn't to enlarge the eye, it's just to make sure that I haven't messed it up badly. Straighten it back out. That's all I'm going to do with this little hammer right now. I'm going to bring that back up to heat, bury it in the vermiculite to cool it slowly and anneal it, and then I'll be ready to do some grinding in the next video. That's all there is to it for now. That's really a fairly simple hammer as far as the forging is concerned. The uh, grinding will take a little bit more time to try and get all those bevels perfectly even. Ultimately, the flat face on that hammer will look very much like the flat face on this hammer. This kind of heavily chamfered corners, almost an octagon. But it will have a ball peen on this end instead of this little flat peen. But I'm going to let that cool in the vermiculite overnight, so it'll be tomorrow before I get back to it and do a little grinding. And we'll bring you along with the project when I get to that point. For the remainder of this afternoon, I think I'll work on some of my hinges that I still have more orders for. This is a great thing to do while the power hammer's down, because I don't use the power hammer on these hinges. So it's an all-hand work thing, and that works really well. And these people will get their work just a little ahead of time that way. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you can give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. In the meantime, feel free to watch more of the videos, share the videos with your friends, but then head out to the shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.